So Lord Brahma had prayed. Lord Krishna was the destroyer of these political parties. So many, Lord Krishna of course arranged for the battle of Kurukshetra. Lord Krishna was, he, he encouraged Arjuna to take part in the battle of Kurukshetra. Why? Because they wanted to remove all, the, all of these demonic kings from the earth. Yeah. And at the same time, by killing them, they all get liberation and they're able to go, go to the spiritual world. So there was a blessing for them. So Lord Krishna arranged that and then he met Queen Kunti said, Your prowess never deteriorates. Lord Krishna shows his prowess that he's able to arrange the creation the maintenance and the destruction of the universe. You, our prowess may deteriorate as we get old, the body becomes weak and you're not able to do things quite the same as you would do when you were young. But Lord Krishna described he was on the planet more than 100 years, I think 125 years he was on the planet but his prowess never deteriorated. He was still like a young man. He was still in, in fresh youth. He was still like a, a, a blooming youth. So this is why Queen Kunti says <coughs> to Lord Krishna that your prowess never deteriorates. And then she said, you are the proprietor of the transcendental abode. The transcendental abode, of course, is Goloka Vrindavan, as well as the, the Vaikuntha. The Lord is the proprietor of both of these places. Everything comes from Him. This was mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita. Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo Mata Sarvam Pravartate. Everything material and spiritual comes from Lord Krishna. So the transcendental abode, the spiritual world, Vaikuntha and Goloka Vrindavan, all of these places, they have their origin in Lord Sri Krishna. They're coming from Him. We have to understand how He is the proprietor of everything that everything comes from Him. Everything animate and inanimate that is within the universe, right? Isavasyam idam sarvam yakkincha jagat jam jagat. Right? Everything animate and inanimate, meaning everything which has consciousness and what when those things which don't have consciousness, that they all have their origin in Lord Sri Krishna and the material and the spiritual worlds. They're also the property. They're coming from Lord Krishna. Now the spiritual worlds, of course, are eternal. But the Lord is the proprietor of these places. And everyone who's there is devoted to the Lord. They enjoy the pastimes of the Lord and they enjoy the association of the Lord. So Lord Krishna is the, the proprietor of the transcendental abode, <coughs> meaning the holy dams, their transcendental abodes, Vrindavan, Dwarka, and Mayapur, this place, Ayodhya, all of these different places, they are transcendental abodes, and the Lord is the proprietor of these places. And it mentions that you descend to relieve the distress of the cows, the brahmanas, and the devotees. So Lord Krishna 
is very much affectionate to his devotees. The devotees, they're always thinking of Lord Krishna and Lord Krishna is always thinking of his devotees. So when the devotees are in distress, then the Lord wants, he takes action, he, he comes to help them and to encourage them. And when the cows are in distress, then Lord Krishna is also concerned for that. And then also the brahmanas. So these three important elements of society are very dear to the Lord. The cows, the brahmanas and the devotees. The devotees, may, some of them may be brahmanas but not always. Devotees can exist in any ashram, in any position in society. The brahmanas, of course, that's a special class of people. Brahmanas are, we generally, we think, brahmana pandit, you know, that they've studied the scriptures. Brahmana mean, is described in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna mentions the nine qualities of the brahmana. Samo, damas, tapas, socham, shantir, arjavam, evacha. Jnana Vijnanam Astikyam Brahma Karma Swabhavajam Lord Krishna is saying Brahma Karma Swabhavajam The Brahmanas have these qualities Cleanliness, mercy, austerity, truthfulness, peacefulness, self-control, knowledge, wisdom and re religiousness So the, the Brahmanas have these nine qualities and they're the head of the society. In the social body, the different vanas re represent different parts of the social body. The kshatriya are the arms. When they use the arms, we use the arms to protect us and to attack others who are giving us trouble. So the kshatriyas are the arms in the social body. The vaishyas are producing the food. They are the belly of the social body. The sudras are the workers, they are the legs of the social body. And the brahmanas are the head. The body without the head is a dead body. And society without brahmanas is like a dead society. Brahmanas are very important in this society. And because this is Kali Yuga, there's a great problem. There's a scarcity of brahmanas. Nobody, the, the so-called brahmanas, the jati brahmanas, those who are brahmanas by birth, take up working. They go and work in the office and they sit on, in the office of some big company and they say, I am a brahmana. They're claiming to be brahmana, but they don't work like the brahmana. So when Krishna talks about, the, he's concerned about the distress of the brahmanas and the cows, and the devotee, he means the brahmanas are those who have the brahminical qualities and those who work like a brahmana, right? The brahmana is allowed to work. He's allowed to worship the deity and he can teach others to worship the deity. He studies the scripture and he can teach the scripture and he can accept charity and he can give charity. So that is all a brahmana is supposed to do. A brahmana is not supposed to work in a job. He's not supposed to take up service under others. He's supposed to remain independent. So those kind of brahmanas are very dear to Lord Krishna. Brahmanas like Sudamana, Sudama, who lived with Lord Krishna in the Guru Kula. Sudama was very poor, but he, he did not give up the Brahminical culture. <coughs> he did not take a job. He remained a humble Brahmana and lived by begging. Even when he became opulent, he accepted all the wealth which was given. He accepted it in the mood of renunciation. And quickly he went back to Godhead. 
So Brahmanas are very dear to the Lord and when they're in distress then the Lord is also concerned for them and He makes arrangements to help them. Just like when the Brahmanas need food then it's the duty of the king, the saintly king, that he will provide food for the Brahmanas and he will give shelter, he will give a home, he will arrange for the welfare of the Brahmanas. He will provide some kind of money for them so that the Brahmanas will not be greatly inconvenienced. So the, the Brahmanas have, are they're generally given that kind of care from others. So they're important elements in society. And cows are also very important in society because cows provide the miracle food which is milk and from milk we make ghee and with ghee we're able to perform yajna. We want to perform yajna we have to have ghee and the ghee comes from the cow. We don't use buffalo ghee, we should use cow ghee, right? Nowadays you get all kinds of milk people drink. They'll drink camel milk, they'll drink goat milk, they'll drink everything. But the, the real milk, the best milk by far, is the cow's milk. That's very special for helping the brain to develop. So the, the, the cows are very sacred to Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna is coming from a, a cowherd family. Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda were Vaishyas and they had nine lakh cows. And Lord Krishna as a young boy would take the cows every day and he, because he, his family were taking care of cows he was able to grow up drinking milk and eating buttermilk and having food cooked in ghee and so many different milk products were there. So that was the life. Lord Krishna was enjoying this. So many milk sweets and cream and different yoga, everything from the cow, made from the cow. Lord Krishna enjoyed that. And when they're in distress, then Lord Krishna is also in distress and he wants to take care of them and he will punish anybody who dares to harm the cows because they're so dear to Lord Krishna. And then the third section were the devotees, those who are devotees of the Lord. When they're in distress, then the Lord is also concerned for them. Just like when there's a, a demonic ruler, then the Lord will make some arrangement to remove that ruler, to take away the distress of the people. So Lord Krishna is very much concerned for the welfare of those who have surrendered to him, the cows, the brahmanas and the devotees. They have all surrendered for the service of the Lord. The cows provide everything for the Lord, for his pleasure. Even today, if you see temples in <laughs> India, they will have a goshala and they will have cows there to provide milk for the deities. And recently the GBC in Iskon have passed a resolution that they want to arrange ahimsa milk for all the deities in Iskon. They want that all the deities in Iskon they should get ahimsa milk, milk which means milk from the cows which are protected by our devotees. Other milk from the supermarket that's not from protecting cows. You know that they, some business-like people are very cruel and they will take advantage of the milk of the cow and then when there's no more milk then they will kill the cow and eat the meat. So that, that will never be done by those people who are devotees. They could never do like that. They rather will take care of the cows. Even the cows old, we don't kill it, right? We keep it and take care of it. 
means very sacred creature. And next life will become a human being. The soul from the cow is going to be given a human body in the next life. <coughs> so these animals are that these the brahmanas, the devotees, and the cows are all very dear to Lord Krishna, and he was concerned to relieve their distress. And then Queen Kunti said to Lord Krishna that you are the you are the preceptor of the entire universe, and you possess all mystic powers, all mystic powers. There's eight mystic powers, right? You can become heavier than the heavy, heaviest and lighter than the lightest, anima siddhi, lagima siddhi, and you can become very small and you can be, you can have all, one of the yoga powers is prapti siddhi, to take something from very far away. Prabhupada gave the example about how he met the yogi and they, he took, the yogi asked him, what fruit do you like, Prabhupada said, pomegranate. So yogi said, oh yes, pomegranate. He said, they have good pomegranates in Kabul. And he was sitting in Calcutta and he brought a pomegranate into his hand and gave it to Prabhupada. He could do that. He could, he had prapti siddhi to bring things from far away. So it's a yoga siddhi. And we read in Sri Bhagavatam about people like Kardama Muni. He had yoga powers. He created an aerial mansion, a whole big mansion, which could fly through the sky and it could go to the higher planets. It could go to Mount Meru, where the demigods all go to enjoy. So some yogis are, are so powerful. But Lord Krishna, he is the topmost of all the yogis. He has <clears throat> mystic powers to perfection. Lord Krishna, as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, He can impregnate just by His glance. No man can do that to a woman. Just by His glance, impregnate the woman. But Lord Krishna can impregnate the material nature and He can impregnate all the living entities into the material nature so that they will all take birth. Now Lord Krishna, as the supreme mystic power, He's holding all of the planets in place. Atlas, <coughs> in, in the Greek philosophy, there's Atlas, and he, He's picking up the earth, but it's very heavy, it's very big problem to pick up the earth, it's so heavy, but Krishna's holding all the planets without any effort, what, what, by his mystic potency. He's keeping all the planets in orbit, they're all moving under his control. So he is the supreme mystic yogi, and he is the preceptor of the entire universe. Preceptor, he's a teacher, right? He's giving, teaching the Bhagavad Gita to the world, to the whole universe, not just the world, but he taught the sun god also. Imam Vibhishvate Yogam Proktavam Mahamabhya. Krishna spoke the knowledge to the sun god. So even the sun god has to be taught by Lord Krishna. And Lord Brahma, with Tene Brahma Ridaya Adhikaviye, the very knowledge was put into the heart of Lord Brahma. So Lord Brahma, he also learns from Lord Krishna and all of, Lord Shiva, we say Vaishnavam Yata Shambhu, Lord Shiva is the greatest Vaishnava, he is a devotee of the Supreme Lord. So just see how great Lord Krishna is, that all the demigods like Lord Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva, they are all under him. So he is the ultimate preceptor of the universe. Even Lord Vishnu likes to get the darshan of Lord Krishna. And that's described in the Srimad Bhagavatam and the 10th canto. Then Queen Kunti finishes, she, she said, You are the almighty God and I offer you my respectful obeisances. So the almighty God Bhagavan, the 
Namaste. So this is Lord Sri Krishna. Lord Krishna, of course, said the same thing himself in the Bhagavad Gita. Lord Krishna said, Mataparataram Nanyat Kinchit Asti Dhananjaya. There is no truth superior to me. Everything rests on me, just as pearls are strung on a thread. So Lord Krishna gives this wonderful example about putting the beads on the thread. So when we have the beads on the thread, you don't see the thread, you just see the beads, right? With the neck beads, you should just see the beads, you don't see the thread. And so Lord Krishna is holding the whole universe like that. He's holding everything through the super soul, through his expansion as the super soul. He's maintaining this entire creation, keeping all the planets in their positions. It's all going on under his direction. So he is the supreme Lord. He is the, the guru of the universe. Lord Brahma, Lord Vishnu, Lord Shiva, they all have to, they all take shelter at the lotus feet of Lord Sri Krishna. That he is the, the supreme amongst all the devatas. So we want to understand how wonderful Queen Kunti is, and she has given us these nice prayers to help us <coughs> appreciate Lord Krishna more. By hearing from Queen Kunti, we can perfect our life also, and we can remember Krishna. It makes it easier for us to remember Krishna because Queen Kunti has described so nicely all of the qualities of Lord Krishna. Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Any question? So Srila Prabhupada lectured on all, all of these verses, the prayers of Queen Kunti. You can read that book, very nice book published. Prabhupada's purports from the book and then Prabhupada's lectures on the verses also. Very nice, very elaborately describing and explaining to us Lord Krishna and Queen Kunti, how they're such wonderful personalities and we're so fortunate just to know them and to hear about them. Okay, Hare Krishna, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Kottri Manam Dei.